Your life begins in a war zone, a red carved out by your father on the floor of a fast-moving river. Before you even learn what a predator is, you must fight your first enemy. Your only protection is your father. Unlike many fish, the male smallmouth bass is a fanatically devoted parent. But one day, a new threat arrives, but a slow-moving phalanx of armored bulldozers, a school of freshwater drum, their downward-facing mouths designed to crush shells, has found your nest. They're here to feast on the eggs. Your father is a whirlwind of fury, charging and ramming the intruders, but he cannot be everywhere at once. For every drum he chases away, two more slip past his guard, their crunching jaws devastating a section of the nest. You survive, huddled in the gravel, watching the carnage. You learn the first and most important rule of your existence. Life is not about finding peace. It is about surviving the next battle. Your father's protection doesn't last forever. One day, his paternal instinct fades, and he vanishes into the current, leaving you and your surviving siblings to fend for yourselves. You are now a solitary warrior, driven by a ferocious appetite and a genetic need to fight. You learn to hunt. Your first true duel is not with a fish, but with a creature of armor and claws, a crayfish. You see it scuttling between the rocks, a perfect meal that fights back. You don't charge head on, that is for fools. You are a brawler, but one smart. You use your explosive speed to flank it, and with a swift, powerful crunch of your jaws, you disable its primary weapon, the claws. You learn that even your food is a battle. With a full belly and a warrior's confidence, you patrol the sunlit shallows. But you have forgotten the most important rule of the river. There is always a greater warrior. A shadow falls over you, vast and impossibly fast. Before you can react, a terror from the sky descends. An osprey, its eyes locked on you, plummets like a feathered missile. In a blind burst of panic, you shoot under the dark ledge of a large boulder. As the osprey's talons slice through the water where you were a microsecond before, close enough to feel the pressure wave. One day, you see the easiest meal of your life. A tiny wounded fish, fluttering helplessly near the bottom, its movements slow and pathetic. It's an open invitation, a free meal. You don't even bother with tactics. You attack with the fury of a brawler expecting the satisfying crunch of your prey. But at the moment of impact, the fish disintegrates. It explodes into a milky cloud of microscopic particles that you inhale in your attack. It was a lure. A piece of the mussel's own mantle tissue dangled by a freshwater mussel to trick a host fish. The cloud you inhaled was not just water. It was a swarm of the mussel's parasitic larvae called glochidia. Hundreds of these microscopic parasites now clamp onto your delicate gills. They're here to use you. A reminder of your foolishness. Years pass. You are a magnificent bronze-backed gladiator, but you cannot fight the sun. A long, brutal summer brings a severe drought, the current slowing to a lazy crawl before breaking apart entirely. Your world shrinks, trapping you in a single, isolated pool. It is a stagnant, muddy prison, and you are trapped in it with your rivals, your food, and your future executioners. The water warms to a tepid bath, and the oxygen thins until every breath is a struggle. But the greatest terror comes from a new direction the land. At night, you are hunted by a pair of glowing eyes and clever, probing hands. A raccoon patrols the shallow edges, a patient thief snatching the weaker fish one by one. You are forced to stay in the deepest, most stressful part of the pool, constantly on edge. During the day, a new monster arrives, a sleek, hyper-aggressive mink. It dives into your pool, a blur of fur and teeth, a semi-aquatic killer in a closed arena. You engage in a brutal, close-quarters brawl, escaping its jaws but not without a deep gash on your flank. The rains have returned, and your river kingdom is reborn, and now you patrol your new territory with a violent need to reassert your dominance. Every shadow is a challenger. Every movement is a potential fight. It is in this state of high alert that you see it's a fat, lazy shiner dangling limply in the current. You strike out a pure, unadulterated fury. The battle is the most epic of your life. You unleash every ounce of your legendary power. You make powerful surging runs that threaten to snap the line. You erupt from the water in a series of spectacular acrobatic leaps, your bronze body shaking violently in the air. You are finally subdued and pulled from the water onto the riverbank. You prepare to face the master angler who has bested you in this legendary duel. Instead, you see a man sitting on a bucket who looks down at you not with admiration, but with pure annoyance. Damn it, another rock bass. He doesn't measure you. He doesn't take a picture. 
He roughly rips the hook from your jaw and, with a dismissive flick of his wrist, tosses you back into the river like a piece of trash. You sink into the current. Your greatest fight was nothing more than an inconvenient bycatch for your opponent. Your humiliation feels an even greater rage. You become the undisputed tyrant of your river section, a bronze-backed demon attacking anything that moves with reckless abandon. This legendary aggression doesn't go unnoticed. Stories begin to circulate among the local anglers about the crazy bronze back in the deep pool, a fish that fights with the fury of a cornered lion. These stories reach the ears of a man who is not a simple fisherman. The hunt is professional and calculated. The collector arrives not with a bucket and a worm, but with a high-end boat and specialized gear designed to catch and transport a trophy fish alive. He targets you with a lure you cannot resist, and the battle is the fight of your life. But the angler is a master. He plays you expertly, tiring you out. You are released into your new home. It is a paradise, and it is a prison, a private lake perfectly engineered. The water is impossibly clear. The rock structures are perfectly placed for ambushing, and the water is teeming with fat, naive bait fish. Your life as a wild warrior is over. Your new life as a gladiator in a rich man's arena is about to begin. You quickly establish yourself as the king, but it is an empty kingdom. You soon learn you are not the only monster in this golden cage. Another legend reigns, a colossal flathead catfish, the silent reclusive god of the abyss. A cold war between the two of you begins, and your life becomes a repetitive, stressful performance. Every weekend, the parade of boats arrives. You cannot resist attacking the intruders, and the result is always the same. You are caught, admired, photographed, and released again and again and again. But the constant stress of being caught and released weakens a fish's immune system, making it vulnerable. You are caught multiple times in a single day, your exhausted body weighed on a digital scale, your fighting spirit reduced to a number on a scoreboard as men cheer. Your wild, resilient immune system finally collapses. That pristine, overstocked private lakes are a breeding ground for bacterial infections. A disease sweeps through the population. You are powerless against this invisible enemy. You are weak, dying. And after being released one last time, battered and furious, you make a mistake. You chase a fleeing baitfish into the dark, murky territory of the flathead catfish. The confrontation is inevitable. The ever-opportunistic predator senses the end of your rival. He emerges from his dark lair for a final, dominant meal. He engulfs your dying body, but you are a warrior. To the end, in a final, instinctive act of defiance, you flare the sharp, bony spines of your dorsal fin. The spine lodges deep in the flathead's throat. The giant thrashes, choking, unable to swallow or spit you out. Both of you are locked in a fatal embrace at the bottom of their golden prison, both victims of a world they were never meant to share. So what's the next creature we should explore? Drop your suggestions in the comments below. And if you felt for the plight of our broken champion, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and hit that hype button for the next video. Thanks for watching.